Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. We'll start off by uh, thanking all of our veterans on, on uh, Veterans Day for uh, the sacrifices the men and women make for us to have our freedoms and for uh, all of us to do what uh, what we love to do and, and um, praying for all the men and women that are in the service and, and what they've done for us. So as we finished up the bye week, we start back today. Guys had lift this morning, and uh, we'll have our, our, our practice today. We had a good good open week last week with regards to some of the things that we needed to get done, which is a lot of our younger guys getting some full padded practices, um, playing against each other. Uh, given our older guys uh, that have played a lot of snaps a little bit uh, of, a, of a break so much uh, from a recovery standpoint, we were able to get a couple of days in, uh, didn't put pads on with those guys. I uh, have a number of kids that are still nursing some injuries, but I, I believe that everybody will be available for this Saturday. Yourself approaching multiple bye weeks in the season, especially now that it's going to be more common moving forward. Well, we knew it was coming, so we had a plan for it since the summer um, and, and kind of how we were going to construct not only uh, the practices but uh, what we were going to do during those bye weeks. Uh, I think first and foremost, when you have multiple bye weeks, uh, it's easy to say it's the opportunity for those older kids that have played a lot of snaps, fifth and sixth year guys, to get a rest. But it's a better chance for us with what's on the horizon potentially uh, with roster management and those things of getting a chance to get our younger players that we had a chance all through uh, some spring ball, some fall camp, and all of a sudden you're now reading a scout card uh, for the most part of that season to give those guys just K-State versus K-State and um, offense versus defense and, and give those guys a chance to, to play football and see how they've progressed. What do you say is the biggest thing you're stressing with this team right now about what you want to see improve over the last three games? Um, I, I think it's the daily improvement. It's easy to say um, big picture, you know, what do we got to get better at uh, schematically, offensively, and defensively. Uh, but the fact that it's it's mid-November, um, you know, it, it sometimes gets forgotten. We are a 7-2 and two football team. Um, that has a lot of things in front of us to play for. We don't know and we can't control uh, what other teams are going to do. I think everybody knows this. It's it's um, a lot of things can still happen. But for us, we we've, we've got to play and practice and prepare mentally and physically each day to give ourselves a chance to be successful. Anybody can beat anybody in this league. We all know that. Um, we're playing a really good Arizona State team that's that's a, a hot team that's playing well and finding ways to win. Uh, so we got to put our, play our best football, but we've got to practice and prepare our best. Health-wise, for you guys, for the guys that were able to kind of make steps in the right direction, do you feel pretty good about where you are there? Yeah, I, I do. I don't think anybody – um, is is out this week that um, was in question. So I think we should have the full complement of the guys that aren't already out with season-ending injuries. And then if you've faced a number of talented running backs, if he's healthy, Cam Scadaby was another guy in that caliber. What do you like most? About yeah, that? he's a stud. Um, he's a downhill guy, but he's got enough quickness. He's got great hands out of the backfield. He'll pass protect. He's an every down back. Um, uh, fun kid to watch. He, he breaks tackles. You're not going to arm tackle him. Um, you know he's had a tremendous year, one of the best years in the Big Twelve, and uh, deserves all the accolades that that he's receiving. And he's a terrific player. And then with all that extra practice time for the younger guys, did any one show any indication of maybe being able you to know, help you out in this home stretch? Yeah, I, I just look at our offensive line. Some of those young guys, you know, uh, Kyle Rockers, Gus Hawkins, and Navarro Shunky, Cade Massey, you know, that Ryan Howard, all those young kids getting those guys an opportunity because they don't have that opportunity um, a whole lot. I, I just feel like that, that young crew in the O line, um, yeah, they're not ready, they're still progressing. Um, but they're they're bigger, they're stronger, they're um, having a great winter with, or excuse me, fall with Coach True. They just gotta, you know, compound that with having a phenomenal winter so that they can get in the mix next year. Last time we spoke with you after the game, you mentioned fundamentals, yeah. getting back to basics. Was that something you accomplished? Um, well, with our with our guys that um, practiced, we we always are working those things. This week, um, you know because we took so so much time with those older guys to get them back a little bit. We'll probably do a little bit more good on good so that we get speed on speed. That's something that um, uh, when you take the time off that we did, 
um, we want to be able to have our ones go against our twos and vice versa. Plus, we're down a few guys, so we won't do as much scout team. We'll get some good on good, and I think that's important when you come off of an open week that you don't just stay scout team for a whole week uh, and expect you to be able to catch up with the speed of the game because there's an advantage that Arizona State has. They're continuing to play, and they've got a rhythm. We've got to find that rhythm this week in practice. You talked about Scadaboo, who's – Yep. Absolutely a blast to watch, but if you're not fundamentally sound with him, you're in trouble, aren't you? Yeah, you are. He's going to make you miss. He's going to run over you. He's he's not going to get tackled by an arm tackle. He's going to push the pile forward, um, and uh, they're playing really well up front. And I, I really like their quarterback. I think he's a perfect fit for what they're doing. I think Coach Dillingham's done a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, they've they've had some success in the transfer portal for sure. Um, you know, second year in the system. Uh, those guys are, are playing with a lot of confidence. They have a wide receiver that is as good as we've seen in the league. He's, he's making play after play. And, and I know a lot of the defensive guys. I know the D coordinator and the linebacker coach, Brian Ward and A.J. Cooper. They're great coaches. They're great human beings. Um, they're, they're playing uh, at a high level. I know they probably didn't play as well as they wanted to against UCF, but I, I also know B. Ward and I know Coop. Um, they'll have those guys uh, firing on all cylinders. What do they show defensively? Um, probably a little bit more four down, um, like some of the others. You know, we get about half and a half now between four down and three down. Um, they're very aggressive. They have really good design blitzes that are hard to see. Um, sometimes you get teams where it's easy to see the blitz. These guys, are, it's not easy to see. They do a great job disguising. Um, they've been tackling well. They've been creating turnovers. Uh, and they've been disruptive up front. I like their front. I know Kenny Dillingham is an offensive coach. What have you seen from, I guess, their identity on offense outside of the players? Well, um, get it to the tailback. You know, I mean, Scadaboo's a great player, and that's they they focus their offense around him, which they should, because if they do that, then they're opening up all their play action passes, their RPOs. Um, they, you know, they they force you sometimes to put more people in the box, which gives them one on one coverage. Um, you know, I, I they, they've done a really good job of staying balanced on, on running and passing it. Uh, what do you want to see from the wide receiver room over these last three games of the year? Just uh, same as we want to see from every group, consistency, um, continuing to improve. Um, you know, everybody, I think all every position, you could bring Austin, Austin Moore and Brendan Mott in here, or Hadley Panzer or Marquis Siegel, some of our captains, Avery and, and stuff, and say, okay, what do we got to do? We all can play a little bit better. We we all can do a little bit more from a preparation standpoint, from a, um, a leadership standpoint, from holding each other accountable. But we've got to, everybody can play just a little bit better. And I'm hoping this off week, um, you know, allow those guys to reset and refresh their minds and bodies. You mentioned you like the quarterback. I'm just curious as to. I mean, he's obviously a run threat and a throw threat. His, does his number surprise you at all, or were you expecting him to do this? Um, well, I don't. I don't think a lot of people knew about him coming into the season, and I know that they had gone through the transfer portal uh, and found some other transfers, I believe. But he beat him out, and obviously, you see why now. He really makes him go because he can beat you with his with his legs, and he's got really good arm talent. But he's just hard to sack. I mean, he's smart enough to, to know, okay, I can't take this hit, can't take the sack and throwing it away. He's running, and I know he got banged up. I can't remember what game it was. So he's he's uh, probably uh, a little bit more, I would say, uh, disciplined in, in running of saying, okay, I can. it's okay to slide or get out of bounds, but when I got to make the play, I'll make the play and, and, and run for the first down. But I just think the fact that, that he can do it throwing and running is, is what is so impressive. Tyson, you mentioned yeah. you, he's very, very productive. What makes him so good? I mean, he gets Atta a ton of balls. Attacks the ball. He's got a ton of targets, and he attacks it and high points it. And uh, I, I think what they do a great job of is moving him around. He's not always to the field. He's not out of, always the boundary X. He's been to the slot to the boundary, the slot to the field. They're moving him around so that you can't just say, hey, whoever your best player is, go cover him because it affects the whole defense when you have a guy that can line up in as many spots as as, as he does. And they've he's got a really good connection with the quarterback. They, those guys are in sync, 
and um, when they needed a play, and I watched uh, a decent amount of that game Saturday night when they needed a play, that's where they went. With the, with the running game, obviously the last few weeks, teams have really, I guess, sold out yep. to stop the run. But uh, is, it, is it as simple as just putting more guys in the box, or are our teams scheming you differently? Um, you know, it, it it's different based on three down and four down of how people are running their, their defenses. Um, and uh, some of it is, is us doing a good job of IDing the right guys and finishing and sustaining blocks and um, hitting the right hole, whatever it may be. Uh, and, you know, we know that we have to be able to rush the football. And um, I know that Arizona State feels they've got to rush the football. So it's going to be one of those games that who can control and win the line of scrimmage. Um, and that's going to be imperative for us. But it's not just O-line. It's tight ends. It's wide receivers. It's running backs. You know, it's it's us uh, having the threat of quarterback run, all the things that uh, make our offense successful. And if we're, uh, which we are more healthy uh, at, at a couple of those spots, uh, I think it makes us a little bit more difficult to defend when we have all those guys uh, clicking on all cylinders from the run game. What would it mean to see DJ get 1,000 yards this year? Uh, I... I He's not a stats guy, um, but, uh, you know, you say DJ Giddens, you'd say 1,000-yard rusher, and I think he is. And so I, I couldn't tell you, I, you how far away is he fits. You can tell me. Oh, okay. Well, I hope he gets it. We've got three games left. <laughs> um, so, I, but it'd be, but it'd be uh, I, I think, uh, important because of what he's meant to uh, our program, what what he's meant to our offense, and and how he's continued to progress and get better and better throughout his time here. There's a guy that came in as a freshman um, from Junction City and and was learning how to play the game the college way, and and uh, has made himself into a terrific football player. Coach, I know it's probably not on the forefront of your mind, but have you been able to pay attention to what Will Howard's doing at Ohio State at all? And do you have any thoughts on that? You know, I I haven't. Um, I, uh, you know, we play almost all the time that they do, and if we don't play them in Salina. So I haven't watched. I just haven't, you know. Um, I root for him. Um, just like I'm, I, I know that um, he, he roots for us. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for his success. Taking down from last game, got a touchdown, had some nice plays out there. How do you think he's been progressing this season? You know, w we've been able to keep him healthy. And so um, I, I think that's been important to him to have that confidence and, and to be comfortable to say, man, I, I'm, I'm as healthy as I've been as a player in a while, um, dating back to his day's previous institution. And so you see him playing with a lot of confidence. Um, and, and it's fun to see him having that success because he's worked his tail off. He's really worked hard on his body. He's worked hard on recovery. He's worked hard in the off season to, to learn what we're doing. Um, doesn't say a whole lot, just does his business and does his work, and it's been fun to see him have some success. And hopefully these last three, three regular season games, he can continue to, to have that success, if not more. When you do run into some you know, problems in the running game, it's never on any one person, but it kind of seems from afar like the offensive line has taken it personally. You guys haven't run the ball lately. Have you noticed that at all in practice? Um, yeah, I don't know if you, you, everybody takes it personally. Riles takes it personally. I take it personally. The O-line, the, the tight ends, you know, um, everybody does because you want to have success. And, you know, we're still averaging, I think, over 200, game, 200 yards a game rushing, and it hasn't been maybe what we wanted last week, but we still had over 200 yards a week before. Um, it's just consistency. But that's, that's the name of the game. I want to be consistent on offense, defense, passing game, pass defense, special teams, um, that's what we're all striving for. And, and that, that's hard in this game, you know. Uh, every team's good, and you, every team's got a lot of film out there on each other. And, um, you know, it's, it's winning your one-on-ones. It's having a good plan and executing that plan. But uh, I think everybody's noticed there's an awful lot of parity in college football right now, a lot of parity, and you can't expect, oh, that one's going to be a win. Ah, that one's going to be a tough game. You don't know. 
there's so much parity right now in college football, which makes the sport a, a great sport between the lines. We got to fix some things outside the lines, but between the lines, it's still a great game. You mentioned the parity in college football. Why do you think there's so much parity this year? It's pretty obvious. You know, people can go where they where they want to go at any time they want to go, and you can get a revamped um, team and lineup and and. Um, there's coaching changes and player changes, and uh, it's the ultimate free agency. And so, kids not playing at one school, he's going to go to the next school. That, that's that's what it is right now, and that's no, no nobody's got a beef with it. That's just the way it is, which has enabled teams to get good quickly. Look at Indiana. You know, I think that's a, a great story in college football. It's it's uh, really good what Signetti's doing there because he got a bunch of guys and brought a bunch of guys from JMU, and they they all click together. Doesn't always click when you bring in a bunch of new guys. It did for him. And so those stories are good for college football. We don't want to always see the brand all the time. We want to see some other schools. And that's why um, you know, it, it's, this game is so, so great. We just got to find some guardrails in, outside the lines, which we're not going to get into today. Coming into the NIL period when we knew it was coming, I think we all assume that the rich will get richer with the NIL. It's been the opposite of that, hasn't it? I couldn't tell you that. I don't know where you're going with that, Fitz. I really don't um, because you can look at Oregon and Ohio State and the rich got richer, right? I mean, that. that and once again, guys, I, I don't know everybody's NIL money. I have no idea. But you take a school like Indiana. I don't know how much money they had, but they got the right guys. I, I have no idea. But that's just why this game is is got such parity is because kids can come and go, and that's coaches can come and go. Kids can. And it, it's nobody's faulting anybody for it at all. Um, uh, but it has. It's you. I don't know why. I don't who who won and who lost it. I don't know why LSU didn't play their best football against Alabama. I don't know why we didn't play our best football against Houston. I can tell you some reasons why we didn't do really well. I don't know why Georgia Tech can beat my – but that's the great thing about this game. It's 18 to 22, 23, 24-year-olds because of six and seven and eight years that come together and, and find a way to be successful on Saturday. And every game is different. Every game, it's, it's a new season. What you did last last week, and we talk about this, and I, guys, for the last six years I've been here, what you did last week has no bearing and nothing to do with next week. And matchups are different, so on and so forth. It, it's hard to win in college football. Not picking specifics here, but as you go into uh, – come off an off week and go into your game week, is this an opportunity – to really focus in on the things you've been doing or an opportunity to add to some of those things? New stuff. I'd say it's an add to. Um, we lost a football game that none of us thought we should have lost other than Houston thought they were going to win, and that's what we're talking about here. I, and, and guys, I've been a part of this at, at my previous school where you lost a lost game and, and you couldn't go out in public. Um, you can't hit the panic button. And I really believe our staff, uh, our team, our players, notice how I say our, never my, have done a phenomenal job of not having those roller coasters. And I'm not going to hit the panic button and say we've got to make all these drastic changes because the track record of our program has been really good when we've stayed the course. And I get frustrated, any of these captains, any of these older kids get frustrated when we don't play to our best of our ability, but you got to turn the page. In life, you better turn the page. And I've had, I've had as tough a week as I've had, non-football related with some family things, and it puts a lot of things in perspective, as you well know about perspective, Fitz. And I'm, I'm fortunate because i got a ton of people around me that – Believe in me, I got an AD that's got my back. Uh, I've got a bunch of people in a lot of places that have looked out for the Climbins, and I'm thankful as heck. And I'm going to go into this week and be excited about being around these guys, be excited that we get to play at home because we never get to play at home very much. The bill is going to be packed. It's going to be fun. And 
let's let's celebrate this rather than try to find the negativity. And I know you're not trying to find the negativity, Fitz. Don't get me wrong, but I appreciate you letting me soapbox for a moment. 